Hello, Civil Squad, and welcome back to the damn podcast channel. We're on the podcast channel today. This is a little different from the normal channel. Over here, we go live most of the time, uh, or we do pre recorded short form videos like this to talk about quick updates, shocking headlines, that kind of stuff, or read comments from uh, longer, in depth videos from the main channel. The main channel, reporting live from my sofa. That's where I do the deeper content, the big, you know, deep dives, that kind of stuff. So make sure you're subscribed to both channels. If you like the vibe, make sure you're subscribed. Now today we're going to be doing one of our kind of quick case updates on a couple of cases. When I saw this, I was like, oh, whoa, these were outcomes that we were hoping would be different and whatnot in one of them. And obviously the Dylan Rounds case is another one of those that is still forming and still going and still unfolding. So the way that these videos work is this. I'm going to put an article up here on the screen. We're going to read it. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to offer my opinions and thoughts on both of those articles. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first article we're going to talk about is in reference to Kylie Rodney. And this is by C this is on CNN's website. Uh, you can see the title is Body Discovered in Submerged Car Confirmed to be Missing California Teen, Kylie Rodney, Police Say. This is by Sherry, Sherry Mossberg, updated 526 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022. So let's just go ahead and read through this and then we'll, like I said, comment at the very end. So the body found inside a submerged car in Northern California Sunday has been confirmed to be the missing teen. Uh, remember, she disappeared at the campground party in the area about three weeks ago, police said. So the article goes into talking about how all these law enforcement and volunteers have been searching for the 16-year-old since she was last seen at the Proser family campground around 12.30 a.m. on August 6th. Authorities were initially treating her disappearance as an abduction, partly because they could not find or locate her vehicle. So, after search crews found a body inside a car that was submerged in Proser Lake, authorities said it was more than likely Ke Kylie, an autopsy now determined that to be true, according to a statement posted on Facebook from the sheriff's office. Uh, the cause and manner of death was not released yet. The investigation into her death is still ongoing, according to the statement. So I'm going to skip down here to where it gets to this next part here. Uh, volunteer dive group Adventures with Purpose, who often join underwater searches, located the vehicle, Moon said. It was found upside down about 14 feet beneath the lake surface, which has dropped about, which has dropped about three feet since the teen first disappeared, according to Nevada County Sheriff's Captain Sam Brown. Uh, her family said in a statement Monday that they are eternally grateful for the support that they have received during the search. We have weathered a storm of unfathomable force, and it is purely thanks to the army of warriors, matriarchs, healers, and helpers holding us up that we continue to stand today, the statement read. While we accept the sadness cast under death's shadow, the rising sun shines light upon us, reminding us not to mourn our loss but to celebrate Kylie's spirit and the gift that we all received and knowing her she will surely be re she will surely remain with us even though we will not get her back it's a beautiful statement uh, between two to three hundred juveniles attended the campground party where she was last seen officials have said the grounds are about 17 miles north of Lake Tahoe and 36 miles from Reno Nevada um, so like I said we're gonna talk comment on this a little bit some of my personal opinions on the matter uh, after we go over this next article so let's go ahead and switch to the next headline and this is gonna be about the case of Dylan rounds so the next headline is Dylan rounds parents want different agency to take over the case of their missing son this is by Nate Eaton from EastIdahoNews.com. Uh, this was published at 8:49 a.m. on August 23rd, 2022. Uh, like you always, I, or sorry, like I always say, if uh, you follow me for the Lori Daybell stuff and Chad Daybell, uh, make sure you subscribe to Nate Eaton from whether it's his news channel, Twitter, all that. Amazing, amazing journalist. Um, he follows a lot of these cases and reports on them, and he does an amazing job. So let's go ahead and jump into this article. So the parents of a man missing from eastern Idaho who vanished from the Utah-Nevada border want, border want a different law enforcement agency to take over the investigation into their missing son. Uh, Dylan, who turned 20 on August 1st, disappeared nearly three months ago while farming in the desert town of Lucen, Utah. His grandmother spoke with him on May 28th and nobody has heard from him since then. There has been no sign of Dylan anywhere and no activity on his cell phone or bank account, according to his parents. The box elder 
County Sheriff's Office in Utah has been the lead agency on the case, but Justin Rounds and Candace Cooley, Dylan's parents, believe mistakes have been made in the investigation, and they are frustrated by a lack of communication. If Box Elder can't even communicate with us as parents, can't even pick up the phone once a week, why are they even working his case because there's no point, Cooley says in an interview with East Idaho, East Idaho News com this is absolutely ridiculous we should have not have to beg for everything in this case Dylan's parents say they have rarely they rarely hear from anyone in Box Elder County Sheriff's Office and were stunned when information the family was asked to keep quiet was released July 28th on the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System NAM US it said after Dylan disappeared, his truck was locked and the key fob was missing. However, the key fob was brought back and placed in the residence, Dylan, Dylan's camp trailer, by unknown person. The information about the key fob has since been removed, and Dylan's parents were told it was accidentally submitted to name, uh, name us or nom us by a detective. Rounds and Cooley say the day the key fob was found in Dylan's camp trailer, investigators didn't seem to care. That happened on day number three after Dylan was gone. They didn't even think to treat anything suspicious. They didn't start thinking something's not right. Something's bringing somebody's bringing this kid's stuff back now. Wait, sorry. Somebody's bringing this kid's stuff back now, and he's missing. No, nothing. They just continued on their merry way. Cooley says. Chase Venstra, 41, and James Brenner, 59, two men believed to have interacted with Dylan in the days before he vanished, were arrested last month for felony gun crimes in Utah. They have, they have not been charged in connection to Dylan's disappearance, but Dylan's parents believe Brenner knows what happened to their son. Brenner was squatting on property near Dylan near Dylan's, and they wish Box Elder investigators would have questioned the neighbor immediately. Court documents indicate he was interviewed. He was not interviewed until June 7th, 10 days after Dylan last spoke with anyone. Brenner had an arrest warrant at the time Dylan disappeared. Box Elder County knew this. He could have been arrested on day one, Cooley explains. You have a violent criminal and you have a missing 19-year-old all within 100 yards of each other. And you don't even think, let's go ahead and execute this warrant because we can take this guy to jail right now. Dylan's parents say they never have been interviewed by investigators. And in a letter to Box Elder County Sheriff's Office, cite multiple errors, omissions, lies, and misconduct as reasons they want the state of Utah to take over the case with assistance from the FBI. I've told myself I just gotta have faith that they're doing what they're doing, Rounds explains. I've just kind of been hoping and praying that they were doing what they were supposed to be doing, but we haven't talked to them at all. I don't know anything that's going on. Rounds and Cooley have not heard back from the Sheriff's Office since they made the request last week, but a spokesman tells East Idaho News the office is working on a response. We received the request, but we don't have a response from media outlets at this time. We are preparing a a response to Dylan's parents first. Box Elder County Sheriff Chief Deputy Cade Palmer says, we currently don't have any updates on new or new information on the investigation that we can share. The case continues to be actively investigated by the Box County Sheriff's Office with the assistance of other law enforcement agencies. And then there is an interview down there. And I, again, I've linked these articles down below. So let's go ahead and talk about some of my thoughts and opinions on these things. So we'll start with Dylan since that's the first, the last article we spoke of. My heart goes out to the parents. I can understand their frustration and the things they're citing as mistakes and you know blemishes if you will in this case like wait a minute why didn't they do this and why didn't they do that i mean these seem like valid points to me right now of course i'm not there i'm not part of this investigation i'm not part of law enforcement i don't know how all this stuff works if i have had a child that was missing i would hope to the heavens above that I would be updated on a regular basis and if I started seeing things like well wait a minute why was this returned to the truck but then it was yanked and oh somebody made a mistake and posted this and did that this would be major cause of concern for me I think it is extremely frustrating the way the system is set up the way some persons have to be classified as missing and so often we see that law enforcement just don't take this seriously and yes everybody has a legal right to disappear in this kind of a thing right um that being said i often feel like people usually know their children their friends things of this nature and so when something seems completely amiss i just feel like that they that should be listened to and taken into account um i would like to see other authorities get involved i would like to see other eyes on the case look at all these other cases that were messed up, John Bonet, uh, you know, all these other major cases that once 
other officials got in, Orrin and Orson, when other eyes were in on the case, you know, things started happening, that kind of a situation. I hope the same will come from this. It does seem very weird that these uh, people who are in such close proximity were never questioned right off the bat, the charges haven't been brought, and that this kind of being, you know, nothing's been brought to the forefront. That being said, maybe there is something going on with that, and we as a public just don't know yet. I really, really, really hope that whatever needs to happen will happen for the sake of bringing justice for Dylan and getting answers for him and his parents and that no like agency ego and that kind of thing gets in the way of that happening. Now let's go ahead and talk about the first article, Kylie Rodney. This is one of those heartbreaking things because so often, you know, you sit here and you see these cases where someone vanishes, right? And you're like, where's their car? Where are they? They've completely disappeared. I mean, this is what we just saw with Dylan, right? Except his stuff was still there. It's a little bit different, but nonetheless, he has seemingly vanished. Same with her. A huge party completely disappears. Two things that come to my mind, first of all, number one, my heart breaks for her family. That was such a beautiful statement that they released, right? It gives me goosebumps. My heart breaks for her, obviously, her friends. I can't imagine the trauma and tragedy that their hearts and minds are experiencing losing her. It sounds like she was a beautiful young lady inside and out, that the world would have been a better place having her. And it sounds like one of those freak accidents that happened, like something took place on her way home. So many times, I I wonder with these cases where people seemingly vanish or things like this happen where just all these things aligned where their car ended up or they walked off and ended up in just this perfect scenario where they're just you can't find them right it wasn't a nefarious thing it wasn't anything other than this bizarre set of circumstances luckily in this one i mean not luckily it's like luckily in the way of getting answers right um, i mean luckily lucky would have been her being alive but at least the family can get answers and some sense of closure as to okay what happened the the water went down they were able to find them i think it is amazing that adventures with purpose was able to find this i mean remember people have been searching for weeks and they went out what they found her on like what day one or two like immediately they found her this is amazing this is such an amazing group of people that go out and do god's work as far as i'm concerned um so if you if there's a group you want to follow support it is this group right here they have done so much good they have amazing content and when i say content i mean they let you in on their process and this kind of thing you can watch their videos definitely check their channel out, definitely check their organization out uh, because they do stuff like this that brings families answers, right? Um, so that's all for today. Again, drop hearts, sofas, dog prints in the comment section for all of the victims of these tragic accidents and crimes. Uh, I appreciate you hanging out with me today, talking about these things. If there's ever anything you want me to review, just send it to the email link down below in the description box. And I appreciate everybody. And until we get around the sofa and the little podcast over here. I'll see y'all soon.